prepared. Not in a sense of dominant way, but in a sense of cultural way. Yeah. Everybody has a culture. Mm-hmm. Keep saying that. You have a culture. You gotta find it. You gotta search it. You gotta look at it. You gotta embrace it. And acknowledge it. There's no way you're gonna survive. Prophecies say you're going to see the end of this world, or what you know. That's what the grandmas say. I've seen my part. I've seen it. I've done my best to put things in place now. Up to the rest, pick it up, take it. Build on it. A lot of people don't believe. It's okay. There'll be a day when they will believe. Because <laughs> it's coming. I don't think they have a choice. Yeah, I think it's, it's either coming. you do or you don't. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah, it's coming. It's right here now. But we're, it's we're, it's we're right in that battle. We're in that fight now. Yeah. Right now. Right yeah. here, There's right a now. spiritual war going on over our spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why we have to be strong. We can't let that negativity win mm-hmm. over us. Because nice that means then we lose all our culture. We lose all our language. We lose all everything that we are created for here. We need to go back to those beginnings now, those humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. Simple. Don't complicate your lives. Mm -hmm. Don't add something that doesn't need to be added. Mm -hmm. See. Look at it. Look at next step. Mm -hmm. That's okay. also part of humility, yes. aren't we? Huh? Not adding more things that you feel is part of humility, too, just, just to keep things simple. Humbleness is is really, it, it's going to be hard because this new wave of coming in, it's going to be hard to have that compassion and love and humbleness. But you've got to have it. You must have it. You've got to. Because that's what's going to help you get through this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest things that we, we don't do is forgive ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's hard. We don't forgive ourselves. I learned that the hard way. It's hard. But at forgiveness, once you do that, you know, in this life, I'm going to tell all of you, I don't have no regrets right now. No. I have no regrets. None. I did my forgivenesses of all, even of people that were my our enemy, enemies, were my enemies. I mm-hmm. forgave them. Forgave myself. If I've done anything to hurt them or say anything to them, I've asked the Creator to forgive me. So I have no regrets. I've lived a full life. You've lived 20 full life. Yeah, really. <laughs> lived a full life. But lessons learned. Lessons learned. Hard ones, good ones, beautiful ones, easy ones, simple. But that's life. Life is what you make it. You can make it hard on yourself or you can make it easy. And that's why I keep telling people keep it simple. Don't complicate it. It's our ego and our mind that does that, complicates things. Mm-hmm. Or the influence comes in. Mm-hmm. You try to help somebody and they don't want to be helped, then the only thing you can do is pray for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The only thing you can do is pray for them. 
pray for that spirit. It's in there. Like that. Maybe that's their lot in life. You don't know. Maybe that's the way their, their journey is supposed to be. You don't know. So you need to have that forgiveness. Don't carry that burden of their problems. Of their, I should have, would have, could have. It's not worth it. But you need to be strong in your own self. You need to be strong in your own will. You have an autonomous will. You need to use it. That's the gift of the Creator. That's the gift of the Creator. To you make these decisions. You have the, the mind and the heart. You use it. They always used to say the elders used to say, "Misula ki heoe," which means you have a brain. Use it. <laughs> you have a heart. Use it. Mm-hmm. That was your will. Your autonomous will. Don't be afraid. Fear is not the conqueror. It's you. Fear is the illusion haunting me. Oh, fear is... <laughs> it's a war than the illusion, all right. Mm-hmm. It's a troublemaker. <laughs> but it's okay. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And don't doubt. When you make a decision and you do something, follow through with it to the best of your ability. Follow through. That's one thing I like to tell my kids. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, whether it's something simple, something you're, you know, you tell someone you're going to come and pick them up or you're going to come and you know, see them. Or, you know, if, you're gonna, if you say you're going to do something, then you do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Can you talk about how that, doing that, keeping your commitments? Can you talk about how keeping commitments and doing, acting on your autonomous will relates to the spiritual battle of the whole? Because I get a, I get a feeling that sometimes when I'm facing something so difficult and I know I have to do something that is not easy and not popular and no one is going to thank me for it but it's the right thing Mm -hmm. i feel like i'm transforming energy for everyone when i do that Mm -hmm. and i I, that's just a feeling i have but Mm -hmm. i wonder if you have any thoughts about well your intention your your it starts with your intention your your what is your intent you see your intention what is the what does your instinct tell you Mm -hmm. you see if you're not true to your instinct and your intention, it's not going to go nowhere. Right. You see? And then you, when you look at that intention, who are you doing this for? Mm-hmm. You see, where's the benefit? Who's benefiting? Mm-hmm. How's it benefiting? What direction do you think this is going to go? There's many things that I've done, projects that I've done have died in mid, midway. Yeah. And it all wasn't timing. Mm-hmm. Timing is the key. A lot of people don't understand that. And they think, what's this timing? No, it's spiritual timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Spiritual timing. And the only way you're going to know that it's a spiritual timing is when things start falling in sync. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. And all of a sudden you start hearing things over and over. Yeah. Why did that person say this? And you yeah, go to another yeah. person, they're saying the same thing. Yeah. What in the heck? That's when you got to go into yourself, yeah. into your spirit. And you got to look at your autonomous will. Where is it at? Then you got to will it. you got to put your autonomous will there and make that commitment that will choose it. And do it. Doesn't matter what people think. Doesn't matter what people say. Doesn't matter what their reaction is because there's going to come a day when all of a sudden it's going to click in their head. 
oh, that's what she was doing. Oh, that's what that meant. Oh, that's what this, and then mm. blah, blah, blah. They're going to go on. Mm. And if it's meant for them to be a part of it, it will be. Yeah. You don't control that. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the thing about the world today is we want to control things. Mm. Don't do it. Don't do that. Cause and effect. Always remember that's always out there at the door. When you start making your watches, uh, you put the will in that and you start working towards that. You start pushing towards that. Things start falling into place. Like I said, synchronicity starts bang, bang, bang. You meet certain people and you get this different feeling. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's something connects and you can't put your finger on it. Then there's a reason down the line that maybe they'll come into that picture. You see? You don't control the situation. You let the spirit do it. You let the will. The will that you put into it, you willed it. By doing it from your chante, from your heart. Yeah. Not from this, from the mind, because the ego will fool you. Mm -hmm. Iktomi. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on now. You can do it like this. Let's go over here. Do it. And this person will really help because they got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, that kind of ego. Mm -hmm. You see, you don't want that. So you got to trust that instinct inside you and that will. you got to will it. If it feels that way, that intention is there, that true intention is there, then do it and will it as it is. I always think of the, the heart as the actual mind center mm -hmm. of all energy. And then the mind, this brain here, is what carries the action mm -hmm. and how you're going to strategically do it. Mm -hmm that thought process looks like that's where those skills come in yeah if it's not here. if it's not there already then you got to create it right mm -hmm. exactly see Problem solving. just like what i told you when i was commissioner for transportation in minneapolis i was sitting there just sitting there at a meeting but this woman was blah 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 that was like <laughs> didn't care what the heck she said i was sitting there doodling i because we had a problem we had too many cars coming in downtown. There was congestion, no parking, smog, all of that. So those are the issues that we had to address. She wasn't addressing that. She was addressing her own personal stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, so I was sitting there doodling and I drew this picture. That's when the commissioner looked at it and hit commissioner. He said, can I see that Jermaine? He said, what is that? Well, it's a rail station, a rail, railway. Really? He looked at it, he said, I like this idea. He said, where's this going to? I said, well, they'll be coming from different directions, from the suburbia. And I said, that way they leave their cars there. You have a train that comes in and have a rail station. And how is this going to run? I said, it's going to run on steam, right alongside your road, right alongside your, the railway can be ran right alongside the highway. Oh. So he went and got his engineers, and I met with some engineers that were my bus drivers. And we got ideas. We sat down at a little restaurant and drew it out. They presented it to the commission. The commission bought it. So Minneapolis now has a rail station. It took a while to get there. But like I said, you have to create it if it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's the will. That's the autonomous will that you put into it and you commit it with a true intention, and you made it so. And the only way for that idea to come in of creating that idea is not here either. Yeah. It's in here. Yeah. Because imagination I yeah, exactly. like, comes from here. Exactly. And that creativity comes from here. I know when I paint or I do anything that's creative that way, I don't, it's not, I don't think about it here. Because when I paint, I just paint. I don't have a preconceived yeah. notion of what I'm going to be creating. It just happens. It comes yeah. out of me. And um, when I do that, my best work comes that way because it's coming directly from, from my spirit. Spirit mm -hmm. doesn't live here. Yeah. It lives here. Yep. And so, you know, when you use that as a guidance, because if you're, if you're working from your heart, it's already open to receive that imagination, that creativity, it's there. So then that magic of um, that idea of creating a new solution 
manifests from yeah. that. And then this is used as the architect of how I'm gonna do this, this, and this, because you're already feeling it. This just goes into overtime. It's like boom, 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 boom. And just make it happen because it makes the body move. It makes you put that work out. Mm -hmm. On to me. And it, what <laughs> happens is that it, it builds a momentum. Yeah. And when that momentum, that's the spirit moving. Spirit moving because it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. You see, it's meant to be. And then what happens is, is then you get that allied ship and that support, that the support mm -hmm. automatically. The attraction. Yeah, that's that's what it, that was, what I was trying to get at. That I feel like. And when the right true, people come. Right. And then it eliminates the other people. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. They're it doesn't, that doesn't have that same will or yeah. that same intention. See, that same instinct. Mm -hmm. They'll be removed. So the ones that are meant to be there will be there. Yeah. You see. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like that will happen and sometimes they come back because they've changed mm. something within themselves oh. or some situation mm. has changed. But but at that moment, because present, past, yeah. present, future is here right now. Yeah. It doesn't exist as one line timeline or anything. Mm -mm. It's here right now. All possibilities exist at this very moment. You'll know when the time is right when, like I said, synchronicity, like all of a sudden something yeah. repeats itself. Mm -hmm. You'll know that's the time. So whatever it is, you're thinking all of a sudden that first thought that comes to your head, then that's what's meant to be. Yeah. You see, you got to trust that. You got to trust yourself, and you feel it, and you feel it in your gut. It's meant to be then. See. It's kind of like you know, Tamir and I when, just even in Akira, okay, living in a city, it's like there's you know where we live, it's not a lot of city whole lot of cement and glass and metal it's, that's more downtown we there's more older places wood structures around us which is better but like we were getting pretty sensitive to a lot of energies we shared this with you yeah. um, then also to me sickness too right and there was of course a lot of experiences that happened there where we witnessed different types of attacks different types of things but then using discernment of where we were going to go so it was like, if there was a certain power we went to, it was meant to cross paths with a certain person. It might have just been for a minute. Mm -hmm. And that, because Kumi always says, it's like, wherever you go, you change something. Yeah. Yep. Right? Exactly. Because that energy Absolutely. is left there. Someone may come and pick it up, mm -hmm. right? And then it will take them somewhere that they need to go. Every single one of us have that capability. Yeah. We do that. And we... A new place we go we've never been to. Something changes because you've already put your put your spirit there. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So You're meant to see the way that dynamics, spiritual dynamics happens. Yep. And how people meet or come together. There's reasons for certain things. May not make sense right now. You see. It may not make sense right now and it may be confusing and well, what's next? What's this? What's that? Then it'll be confusing elements try to come in. But you get back to that basics. Just knock that all out. Get back to the basics. And when you just start doing that, you get back to the originality of what your true intention was. Mm -hmm. And you look at that. You study that. You see? And if there needs to be some changes or adaptations, then do it. If you feel strongly about it in your gut, then change it. Mm -hmm. You see, modify it. Whatever it is, you got to do. No you one's going to do it for you, but you, but you can do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You're creative. You you you're creative people. Mm -hmm. You're creative people. You got to dig deep in that creativeness. Find it. Touch that creativeness and work with it. Work with it, work with it, work with it. You see, pretty soon you become the expert. Mm -hmm. You see, you become the expert. I didn't know anything about jewelry. I didn't know anything about this or that, but I started out with my grandpa and his little carving. He taught me. Mm -hmm. That's how it started. Yeah, little, scared. little tools that were pitiful but I we did it and we made elk teeth we made, made an elk teeth dress 
So I learned techniques. I studied techniques. I studied other artists. The guys in the, in the uh, carving world didn't like women carvers. They wouldn't allow us in. We couldn't even do shows in Minneapolis. Went to Chicago, they wouldn't allow us in. I went to Iowa, wouldn't allow us in. Went to uh, M Missouri, wouldn't allow us in. Big, big, huge carving shows. Fine. So I was about ready to give up. I thought, uh, maybe I'll do something else. I'll stick to my beatings. I started beating, getting back to my beating stuff. That's all right. That's something I knew. All of a sudden, I was called to Hawaii. Got to Hawaii, and they got me this hotel. They said, you're supposed to be resting. And I'm like, what am I resting for? What is going on? You know, <laughs> uh, rest? Okay. So I was going to go down to the ocean and watch the surfers. I really like surfboard boarding, you know, in the water. So, oh, I'll just go put my feet in the ocean. So I went down there. There these two brothers were out there. They were out there surfing, body surfing. Mm. So I thought, wow, someday you gotta have a strong body. These two Hawaiian brothers. So I was sitting there. I took my shoes off. I was sitting there and I was in the water. Here they come up. They said, sister. Yeah. Came over and I said, where are you from? So I told him. They came over and hugged me. I said, you come. Come over to our apartment. It's just right over here. <laughs> oh, boy. Do you know that? <laughs> you know who they were. But they're brothers, you know. They said, where are your brothers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So... Went there and hear their mom was there, their mom and dad. And said, this is mom, dad, brought our sister home. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right, brothers. And said, oh, she came up with her grandma, she, her mama, she came up and hugged me. And dad came up and hugged me. Boy, it's like I never left, you know. Didn't know that. <laughs> so sitting there in the hair, boy, they had big feast. Jeez, holy cow. Food was delicious. I was at a hotel, you know, that was just a few blocks down. So I said, well, thank you. I said, I really appreciate this. And Sister, where you live? Where you at? I said, I'm at this hotel. We'll walk you back. So, okay. So I walked back. It was fine. I went to bed. Next morning, somebody was about 10 o'clock, I was up. I had coffee and croissant, and I was sitting there looking outside the window. I just love that water. So look at this. I hear said somebody knocked on the door, and here it was them. <laughs> Sister, come back. We, we come. Get you. Okay. Didn't know again who, you know, it was the same thing. It was a call. Sister, come on. I said, pack your bags. What? <laughs> said, pack your bags. We're taking you home. <laughs> oh, but my hotel was, we took care of it. Don't worry. Okay. So, packed my stuff and we took off. I was laughing and joking. I had flip-flops on. They were barefoot. I thought, wow. And I was just amazed. So we're going to go diving. Davy, I don't know how to dive. <laughs> I don't know how to do that, you know. No, we're going to go diving for you. We're going to go and get conch, and you're going to eat conch for supper. I was like, I never had it. So they took me back, and I had my own room and privacy and everything set up. Okay, creator, what's going on here? <laughs> what's happening? No, and sister, come downstairs to our shop. And I was like, your shop? Hmm, okay. I'd like to see what they got, what they make. I said, yeah, come down. Oh, my God. They were bone carvers. Oh, what? And you know, that's, those brothers were the ones that taught me how to carve further than what my grandpa showed me. Mm -hmm. 
They showed me the techniques. They showed me the style. They showed me the different... Uneven shell, bone, horn, everything. Mm -hmm. They sat with me. I used their machines and they helped me. And this is how you do this. This is how this is how deep you go. This is what tool you use. What? Bang. For about uh, three days I just sat in that shop and that's all they taught me. I was so blessed. Because no one ever taught me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Would teach me the, the the other techniques of carving and and I seen some beautiful carvings. Some big carvings, you know. A lot of all kinds of things, even metal. So they taught me all of that, sat with me. So I learned that that way. And those are the brothers, they, they were always my brothers. Went back, we'd always eat, clean up, eat, and we'd go back to shop. And then that's when I started learning about the different jewelries, the different jewels, the different shells, mm. how to manage them, how to take care of them for the toxins that come out of them how to neutralize them, all of that. Mm -hmm. So I learned all that. So I was resting. <laughs> <laughs> but I was learning resting. So I came back, and that's when I started my new techniques. I created my own techniques after that. Started working with buffalo bone. Started working with deer bone. Started working with elk. I started working with different bones. Started working on my own techniques, my own ways. Finally got it. Finally became what I wanted. That's when the idea came to me. We don't adorn our women. Who's doing that? With the earrings. I said, those earrings have a meaning. There's the shell, there's the, the detalium, there's the buffalo bone, there's the elk, there's the deer. All of those have meaning on a woman. So I started cutting. So I started giving them away. I started giving them to different women. Pretty mm -hmm. soon, people were... People were buying them, they wanted to buy them. Pretty soon I seen people wanting more. You know? And it's those ways, like I said, synchronicity has a way of coming in. Mm -hmm. People you don't know has a technique or a system or something to teach you, you see. And those brothers are always in my heart, mm. you know, what they showed me. They helped me make my, my money so I could go overseas and have a big mouth to fight the government. <laughs> See, because mm. I didn't want the tribe or anybody to be paying my way. Yeah. And that's how I made my money. Mm. See, so they helped me. I had a conch dinner. Boy, I tell you, I never ate conch before, but that was one of the best conch dinners I ever had. You know, it was, <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> Like, oh, there I had to eat seaweed soup. Never had that either. That was something good. Mm -hmm. That was something good. Seaweed soup. Did you ever see them again? No. Mm -hmm. No, I never did. And that's the strange part because I was back in Hawaii two times. So I couldn't really tell you if they were real or not. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Yeah. All I know was what they told me and what they showed me and what they taught me. I went back to the place, it was all gone. Really? The whole building was gone. What? Yeah, no apartment building, nothing there. I got a funny feeling. And I got a really, oh. you know, funny feeling and I thought those were spirits. Those were spirits. That helped me. So, it's those kinds of things. You believe. You believe. So beautiful. You see, people come in your lives, even in spiritual form. Mm -hmm. See, spiritual form. 
And that's as real as it gets. Mm-hmm. But they gave me something from the spirit world, really. When you think about it. A techniques. They showed me different things. I wasn't afraid. Because I was learning something. I was learning something. And it became very... My life's work. You see? <laughs> okay, my life's work. And it helped pay my way to UN meetings. I even took some <laughs> over there one time. I had a bunch of earrings. So I take them with me. So I set them up like that on the counter. and I wasn't even ready to sell yet. I wasn't even, didn't get my change or anything. Boy, I looked down the hallway. All the Indian women were running. <laughs> hey, holy moly. Okay. Exact change only. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. You had to have that exact change. I didn't get no change. I was going to go downstairs and get change. And, oh, my goodness. But I sold them all. But I was able to stay two more weeks on my motel, see, and feed myself. So it helped. It helped. And I was known as that. You know. But those are things that happen. Spirits come along and teach you something. They take this shape, form, and they help you. Because I know everything that I did in that place, in that house, and all that was real to me. Yeah. Like this. Mm -hmm. It's real. And you made it real with your yeah. following up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I did it. I, I knew the machines, I knew the, the equipment, so I bought everything that I needed. And it worked. And it worked. So, yeah. Sometimes you gotta have, you see miracles. You gotta believe. Just gotta have that faith and believe and leap of faith, as they say. Leap of faith. And it comes to pass. Because you made it so. Yep. Yeah. You made it so.